It's a guessing game. It's a guessing game. It's a guessing game. It's a guessing game. Okay, thank you very much, hello. Hello, I'm Clive Anderson. Welcome to The Guessing Game. We're coming from the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. They're currently looking for actors for a big Hollywood remake of River City. Uh, they've already secured... No, they have. They've already secured Tom Cruise to play Shell Suit Bob. Uh, <laughs> might be a bit of a stretch. Now, The Guessing Game is all about creative thinking, flights of fancy and wild guesses. Uh, playing the game today, we have uh, some top-of-the-range comedians, uh, that range being low to medium-priced. Our first uh, team captain has switched from practicing the law to working in comedy. I would sue her for breach of copyright if I could remember how to do it. Susan Carman. And Susan Team is a stand-up comedian who was born in Wales, lives in London, studied music and film at the University of Warwick, none of which is likely to help much guessing answers to a quiz in Glasgow. Lloyd Langford. Oh. Our second team captain is a graduate of the BBC Light Entertainment Training Scheme, or as it's sometimes known, the Cambridge Footlights. <laughs> It's the man who has more talent in his little finger uh, than several other parts of his body. Alex Horn. <laughs> Hello. And with, with Alex today is an Irish comic who is only the second woman ever to win the So You Think You're Funny competition in its 25-year-long history, proving that women can be funny, uh, but only every 12 and a half years. <laughs> it, it's Ashling B. Those are our competitors, but also joining us is our house band, the Gus and Finn Four. <laughs> yes, indeed, the Gus and Finn Four, they're the ukulele version of Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg, but, uh, but they're, they're less hip-hop, more hip-replacement. <laughs> It's the quick fire round. This round tests the speed and wit of our comedy guests. Uh, this round can sometimes go on for an hour without anyone saying anything. Uh, you score two points for each uh, correct answer and one point for a funny guess. So, question one. Why should you never slip Sandra Bullock a meat pie at the football in Aberdeen? Yes, Alex. You said you were checking the speed and wit of the contestants, so I was just just the speed element there, really. Speed, OK. Just, uh, <laughs> just the wit we're looking for. Yeah, and no, then I was not listening. You weren't listening. Why? Oh, yes. Not saying that the pie is not good, but I think if Sandra Bullock makes the effort to come all the way over here to Aberdeen, yes. I would say to her, listen, Sandra, let's go for a fish tea. <laughs> <laughs> When I was at university, yeah. that was a treat to go for a fish tea. Like a yeah. sit-down fish tea, yeah. and you get bread and butter, and that was like, you would save up all week and go oh. for a fish tea. A pickled would... onion, pickled onion on the side? No, that's no. wrong. No, okay, and... sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I was at university, I had £15 a week to live on, and my mum transferred weekly, because I would spend it otherwise. Yeah. And so we would save up and go for a speed, fish tea. Speed, speed. <laughs> Quick fire round. Quick fire round. <laughs> <laughs> So we've established we like we like Sandra Bullock. She's a she's a good actress. She's, she's a sexy a good actress. actress. We she's, like her. But yeah. what have you got any idea about the actual question here? Oh. Uh, yeah, Lloyd has. Uh, is it because she's a uh, renowned football hooligan <laughs> <laughs> and perhaps would throw the pie at an opposing team player no. to possibly injure them? That's a load of bullocks there. I think no, you think you're wrong there. But so uh, meat, meat pie. The clues in the word meat. I think. Is it because Sandra Bullock isn't actually Bullock? She's uh, ninety percent horse. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're nearly there. That's, you're you're, you're uh, that's close. Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker. You sort of mixing them up. <laughs> she's she's a vegetarian, and you should also never give someone something to eat that that is in their name. So I I, I should never eat a man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that, that is, you're right, actually, because I once authored uh, Michael Fish some chowder, and uh, yeah. he threw it back in my face. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. You're, you're all yeah. getting there. You're circling the subject. So, in the, if I may help you along, there could be some uh, there could be some horse in a meat pie because it has been found in in the pies at Petrodri's, along with everywhere else, obviously. But uh, is she allergic to horse? She's allergic oh. to horse. Oh. I'm going to give you two points for that. Well <laughs> done. That's, uh, How did Sir Walter Scott get his wandering willy unbearably hot? Uh, I would suggest possibly a, a coat. A coat? Just a nice, an anorak. An anorak. He, he warmed up his wandering willy 
who was mm. his dog, Chihuahua. I, I okay, don't, I, so <laughs> you think Sir Walter Scott had a Chihuahua, <laughs> which he put an anorak on or coat <laughs> on. Was he possibly uh, chopping up some uh, chilli peppers and then didn't wash his hands afterwards? <laughs> I'm so thinking not, Walter Raleigh. Is that yeah. a different one? That's a different Walter. There, there are lots of different Walters. He, he was the one with a bike. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> he so he's wondering when he got hot just from pedalling too fast. <laughs> I didn't go very close on this one. Uh, he sent him to hell, wandering away as a character mm. in Sir Walter Scott's novel Red Gauntlet. Oh. There, you remember now, don't you? No. We don't read... Uh, <laughs> I don't read Walter Scott as much as, as we used to. I just realised I thought Walter Scott was the man who first went to the Arctic. You know, yeah. I was like, and I was like, no, because he would have had dogs, because they would have br- brought his sleigh along, but I'm glad I didn't say that You wouldn't take now. a chihuahua on an Arctic expedition. <laughs> Let's do another question. If I grab a gun and start waving it around at a family reunion, what are elderly relatives likely to say to me? a family gathering so I'll answer in terms of my family gathering which should get me the point because it's my family if I yeah. did that at my family gathering my family would say not again <laughs> <laughs> or I'll give you a point for that because that gives you but it's not the right answer uh, Alex I mean, you may be a better person to come up with the right answer than Susan oh, on a I'm, physical level I don't know if that's uh, okay so physical differences there's not many between Susan and <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Me, no, sorry. I plucked my beard this morning. That's the only real. <laughs> yeah, no. So why would I? So I'm I'm male. You're male. Tall. Tall, tall is a good thing. Tall is a good thing. Thank for you. This You're not... slim, Alex. Is that anything to do with width of body? Are you no. saying that I'm not slim? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Well, a... I've asked for the differences. I think everyone here initially thought height. However, Ashling thought, well, she's a bit on the porky <laughs> side. <laughs> but I'm well, slim. Well, we were playing this oh. game for fun, Lloyd. Oh. But yeah. I think uh, we've divided the teams all. nicely now. There's oh. there's real edge in this. Uh, now the answer is. The elderly relatives would say you've grown because a study at UCLA, an American university, I believe, found that people perceive men as taller if they're holding a gun. (laughs) I think if you're holding a gun, you can convince anyone to believe anything. Yes. No, apparently estimates are up to about 17%. uh, An Air Force study in America confirmed this. People estimate your height 17% taller if you've got a gun. (laughs) Okay, uh, that's the end of that round. And uh, let's see how the... Oh, this is terribly exciting. Gosh, I'm beside myself. Uh, Because (laughs) Susan's team has three points and Alex's team has three points as well. (laughs) Couldn't be more exciting. (laughs) Excellent. Well done. It's... uh... We're going to be hearing more now of the Gus and Finn Four. I once asked them the difference between a ukulele and a banjo, and they talked on the subject for half an hour. I learned something that day. Never ask the band a question. <laughs> also joining us today is our resident thespian, scene stealer, voiceover artist, and doll claimant, the actor, Harry Gooch. <laughs> Harry, Harry has appeared in countless big budget Hollywood movies, and by countless, I mean zero. <laughs> Anyway, the guys will play a tune that relates to a famous moment in time. Could be from history, films, politics, celebrity. Uh, simultaneously, our uh, thespian, Harry Gooch, will drop in a few effects and remarks and general clues. You'll have a chance to deliberate and come up with your best guess. There'll be one tune per team. So this is on a separate basis. Susan team, first of all, from these musical and other clues, what are we on about? Come on, everybody. It's given time. Do, do, do. The funky gibbon, funky gibbon, but it's not hot. So come on, do funky gib now. How'd you like it? You been anywhere nice this year? No, oh, I was there myself last year. Gibbon. Lovely in it, lovely beaches. Funky oh, a bit round there. Gibbon. Need some product. <laughs> oh. Well done, very good performance. <laughs> That, that wasn't so much a series of clues as an entry for the Turner Prize. 
Can you can we identify what you've heard there? Yes, or, yes. yes I'll, I'll talk you through the board. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, um, <laughs> uh, that was uh, the Funky Gibbon, which by, is by the, the goodies. Gibbons, by the goodies. By the goodies, yes. And then Harry uh, used a rattle. What sort of rattle was it? Football rattle. Football rattle, yeah. And was uh, haircutting, doing a haircut. Is it something to do with the day uh, Diane Fossey got a perm? <laughs> I think I've got a specific reference. No. That's quite specific. Uh, the answer is no, but... Okay. Uh, I think uh, it was a, a, a foot, footballer... Footballer. ...got a haircut. Haircut. Wayne got Rooney. To, Wayne, Wayne Rooney, Rooney is right. Hair Wayne, it's, it's, hair, hair it's a hair transplant. Well done. Yes. Yes. Uh, well done. You get a full two points for that. So, so well done. Uh, let's, let's go on to, to your clues and your historic moment. Ah, heat wave, heat wave. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Just like the guy whose feet are too big for his bed. Nothing seems to fit. Those raindrops keep falling on my head. They keep falling. That's why I'm free. Nothing's worrying me Nothing's worrying me I don't think it matters whether you get this right or not. It's just a performance here. Lovely. This is, yeah. So they were singing about heat and then there was some rain, rain. effect. So it's sort of about weather. And weather. Actually, so what, what might we be thinking about or even worrying about? About the global warming. But So is it happening or not, the global Do the guys know? Is I th- it? I th- some, some people say you, you can't really predict what's going to happen to the weather. They're, what are they? They're TV weather forecasters, mm, they yeah. say that. But uh, <laughs> global warming, I'll give you two points to put you out of your misery and indeed mine. So, so well done. So I think that, yes, thank you. Round three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a quotations round. We'll give you a quote, and you guess who originally said it. For example, hey, it's a lovely day. Let's drive with the top down. Uh, that was, of course, John F. Kennedy. Now, <laughs> Harry will be doing... <laughs> Harry will be doing... I knew there'd be trouble on that. <laughs> Harry will be doing the voiceovers. Uh, so I'd like to start performing, but the only play that I can quote extensively is the, the only one you're not allowed to quote. I thought you had to call it the Scottish tragedy, but then you can't call it that here, because everything... Oh, no. <laughs> so what you're going to do, what Harry's going to do, he's going to do the quotations in character, but not necessarily in the character of the person who said it. Just a random character that he, that he likes doing. And he's got literally five characters he can do. So, <laughs> And you can buzz in uh, when you think you've got the answer. So uh, your first quote, Harry. If God had not intended for us to eat animals, how come he made them out of meat? <laughs> Yes. Linda McCartney. <laughs> That's a, that is, I suppose, about as far away <laughs> as it's possible to be. And uh, I, I should deduct points for that, I think. <laughs> Not even close. Uh, so, are the other team, Alex and... Cardinal Ash- O'Brien? <laughs> well, he's... He said a lot of things, but... Uh, I don't... I, no, nothing about meat. Uh, is, uh, <laughs> I know not to go down that route, uh, which is not, a, not one of his quotes either. But uh, uh, so, <laughs> shall I give you? Shall I give you options? Okay, yeah. Oh, please keep you, that in the edit. Yeah, I'll <laughs> listen just for that. Three, three pill. It might be. Is it okay. Sarah Palin, Bill Hicks, or Gordon Ramsay? Yes, Susan. I think it's uh, the most wonderful woman never made president of the United States, Sarah Pe- Palin. God bless her. They're OK, you're right. You get one point for that, for getting it with the options available. Yeah. So, um, I think having a president that shoots elk out of a helicopter would just speed up the end of the world and then we could just get it over with. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even know elk could fly helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Harry, let's rescue us with your second quote. 
you get a better class of person at orgies because people have to keep in trim more. <laughs> okay. Yes. Is it one of the proclaimers. I don't know their name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you down to which proclaimer I can't... The, the, oh, no, it's, it's not either the of The one on the left. The one on the left. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. Ant, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Cardinal <laughs> O'Brien. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on this time round, because that was letting, getting me into trouble. Yes, Susan. Well, someone statistically in this audience has been at an orgy. Well, all of us but, might have say, been there. We might have all... Well, all, of them, all of them might have been there. But, uh, <laughs> so I think it's someone like uh, Berlusconi or something like that who's quite, who's like that. Hey, I went to an orgy, yeah. then I got some milk, and then I went home and had a fish tea. <laughs> <laughs> a fish tea after an orgy, I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's better to do it after yeah, yeah, yeah. than before. Or even during, Clive. I don't know if you've oh. been to an orgy and gone, I've got salt and sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it, it nips, Clive. It it's nips. A, it's, it's, an, it's an Aberdeen orgy with fish. Do you get little triangles of, uh, of bread and butter as no. well? Well, the thing is, if you're having an, an orgy in Aberdeen, you just loosen your duffel coat a bit. <laughs> OK, well, I'll, give you, I'll give you a clue, and I'm not necessarily suggesting any of these people have ever been in an orgy. So was it uh, Tommy Sheridan, Hugh Hefner or Gore Vidal? I was going to say Gore Vidal before you read out the answers, so I'll say <laughs> Gore, Gore Vidal. All right, you're right. Uh, you get your point for that. Well done. But I... That's your best one yet, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Round four. Excellent. <laughs> we call this, a, this is called Uneducated Guests. Now, the house band will play a themed musical backdrop while I ask both teams some questions. Each team will confer and write their answers down, and when the music stops, I will go over the questions one by one, and the teams will have to buzz in against each other with uh, funny or possibly correct answers. So your specialist subject here is innuendo. So, question one. Why don't I ever open my bumba shoot indoors? <laughs> question two. I fancy having a paradiddle with a member of our house band. Which one should I invite back to my place? <laughs> question three. What disgusting things are stored in a farding bag? Question four, if I told you I once diddled Tara Reid, what would I have been up to? So, question one, uh, buzz if you've got an answer, why don't I ever open my bumber shoot indoors? Yes, Susan. Little known fact, this, Clive, the bumber shoot is actually the part of a chimney that you keep blocked to stop uh, the ashes coming down. And therefore, you don't open your bumber shoot to prevent your nice white living room. I've got one, we've all got one, and the rug in front of the fire becoming soiled oh, with ash. This, bumber shoot. Excellent. This is turning into call my bluff. It's, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> lots of... Lo yes. Uh, a bumber shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Is I actually uh, know this because I, I I did a show about words. I tried to get a word into the dictionary and uh, I got it in. I got a hat. I invented the word hat. <laughs> <laughs> got it in. No, a bumper shoot is an umbrella. And, oh, uh, well done, Alex. Yeah. So why? <laughs> yes, it's uh, uh, it's bad luck. A bumper shoot is a colloquialism for the word umbrella. In fact, it was the original title for Rihanna's hit song. <laughs> <laughs> bumba, bumba, bumba. Uh, I, f I fancy, or maybe bum, I don't know, I fancy like having a paradiddle room. with a member of our house band. Which one should I invite back to my place? Well, I think it's a drummer, but... Well done, you get two points for knowing it, even I didn't know it. It's a, it's a type of drum beat, isn't it? Well, I, I live with a drummer, so maybe you should deduct a point. <laughs> oh. Lloyd, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, we point. can't start deducting points for who you've lived with, otherwise, who's going to be safe? Um, <laughs> so can you do a paradiddle on bongos? Go on then. Yes. 
Let's go to question three. What disgusting things are stored in a farding bag? Yes, Susan. Fards. <laughs> yes. Weasels. Weasels. <laughs> yeah, they are disgusting. <laughs> yeah. I'd say a farder uh, is not just someone who's married to your mother, <laughs> but is also a weasel catcher. Oh. You put chewed up grass in it because the farding bag is the first stomach of a cow. Uh, if I told you I once diddled Tara Reed, what would I have been up to? Yes. Susan. Well, if you diddle someone, you do them out of something. I diddled you out of a fiver. Well, it yeah. doesn't matter for family. Yes. <laughs> How could, could you bring When I Tara... got diddled, I was given a fiver. <laughs> <laughs> Can we bring Tara into this? I diddled Tara. Or... I diddled. You diddle Tara, but put it around the other way. A Tara diddled. Tara diddle. What's a Tara diddle? A Tara diddle is the same as a para diddle. Spelt wrongly. Spelt wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> what we're looking for is, uh, I'd have been lying if I diddled Tara diddle, because Tara diddle means a lie. In what language? <laughs> Can we bring Tara into this? I diddled Tara. Or I diddled. You diddle Tara, but put it around the other way. A Tara diddled. Tara diddle. What's a Tara diddle? A Tara diddle is the same as a para diddle. Spelt wrongly. Spelt wrongly. <laughs> <laughs> what we're looking for is, uh, I'd have been lying if I diddled Tara diddle, because Tara diddle means a lie. In what language? In, <laughs> In what part of the world French. does someone say a Tara diddle do? I think it's the Gaelic, actually. But. Uh, <laughs> Five. Jolly good. I just have to mop my brow when I hear one of those particular hits. And we go on to round five. <laughs> it's sort of an audience participation round. Guess my story. We've scoured the local newspapers for amusing and interesting stories and asked one participant to come in and talk about it. Is there a Scott Walker in the audience? Scott Walker, could you make yourself known? We may have a light to shine on Scott Walker. There he is. Thank you, Scott. Now... We've taken Scott's story, and it is an interesting story, and distilled it down to three bullet points. Scott will read out the first bullet point, uh, finishing with the line, Can you guess my story? And uh, you can buzz in and attempt to guess the rest of the story. If you get it at that point, after one clue, you'll get five points. But, uh, you know, relieving yourself Speak by for a yourself. Few broad yeah. daylight, you yeah. know, we're not scum. So... <laughs> <laughs> bullet point. Okay. Um... On one fine day, um, cold day in Edinburgh, um, me and my wee hairy mate, Jimmy, decided to take a walk up the Penland Hills. Jimmy relieved himself by a tree, so I gave him a biscuit. Um, Jimmy and I decided to take a rest to take in some of the beautiful Edinburgh skyline, and something caught Jimmy's eye in the trees. Can you guess my story? Is Jimmy your cow that you are leading to market? <laughs> well, you don't give cows biscuits, do you? When they, yeah. when you get <laughs> what, what do you give biscuits to, uh, rather than cows? Uh, uh, that again? Oh, I said dogs. 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 So, dog. so he's a dog. Yes, Jim, I, I, a... I had worked that out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, so we are hairy as a nation. Because it, it is so tough, isn't it? Think of all the pressure. I don't know what pressure you put under by you. <laughs> You're a posh person. You get out of the bath to go to the loo, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Only if someone's getting in afterwards. Oh, oh, what's going on now? So let's, let's go to your next clue. And uh, next... okay, it was a it was a deer, and being um, only one and a half, it's the first deer that Jimmy had ever seen. So he naturally, being a, a terrier, chased it, um, but he didn't come back. Um, so after. Lots of looking around, my girlfriend, friends, um, and lots of the, 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 the general public and Facebook users uh, shared the story and helped look for him for five days, five long days. Um, and on the fifth day, the phone rang. Can okay. you guess my story? I Lloyd. think your dog was taken in by a family of deer <laughs> and brought up as a deer. <laughs> and then after five days, Someone was out, maybe hunting deer, and they thought, that one looks a bit odd. <laughs> <laughs> there was a little a hairier, smaller one at the back. 
basically one and a half years old, you're a dog. What is that in dog years? Six months? Like, it's not old at all, is it? It's wrong way around. Wrong way around. Years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's worth going to the next uh, clue, because it's a good story, a, a striking story. Okay. Uh, um, Jimmy, our black and tan border terrier, had been found, but it was by the side of the road. Um, roadkill, as the local newspaper described it. Oh. Distraught, I collected the, uh, the remains with my friend and brother, and we gave him a, an emotional send-off. Lots of tears and snotters. My girlfriend and I uh, decided to put all his toys in his bed and bowls in the shed, and um, we returned to work. Um, on the Monday, the phone rang. Can you guess my story? Is it Jesus, dog? Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? The, it wasn't. It wasn't your dog by the side of the road, and your dog had been found, and you were reunited in possibly the happiest moment. Can I just say? Wait a minute! Don't interrupt. That's a big moment. No, I lost a dog recently. Yeah. A black and white dog. Wait a minute! This is, <laughs> Someone lost this a is dog. the first answer that has been so spot on. We were building it so beautifully done, and you interrupted yeah. for some. It's bit okay. Of I can do it again. Yeah. So it was. Yeah. <laughs> But the point is, you'd buried, you'd buried somebody else's dog <laughs> with the full ceremony and tears in your eyes. So it's a happy story for you, but there's some but poor Alex's person out there <laughs> who's going to discover when he listens to this programme, that's what happened to my border terrier. No, because the owner of that dog will say they gave it a good send-off and will be happy about that situation because that dog didn't lie by the side of the road. Someone shed tears over that stranger's dog and you, sir, are a king amongst men. <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, Susan, I'll give you two points just to keep you quiet because it's getting to... <laughs> But I'd have to give 55 points to Scott Walker, a king amongst men, apparently. So lovely wee dog Jimmy was found alive and well, and Scott had buried somebody else's pet. So a big thanks to Scott for letting us guess his story. Well done. And thank you. Uh, no, that's, uh, no, that's the end of the quiz. I can't remember the time we've had more fun. But I'm sure if I think about it for a while, I will. And, and that's made a big difference to the scoring. Alex's team have got a very commendable 11 points. But the winning team, Susan's team, with 14. Well done, Susan. <laughs> All that remains today is to thank our guests today, Lloyd Langford and Ashling B, team captain Susan Kalman and Alex Horn, Harry Gooch and the Gus and Finn Four. You have been listening to The Guessing Game, the show that puts the fun into fundamentally flawed comedy formats. It's me, Clive Anderson, saying goodbye. Goodbye. It's a guessing game. This episode of Clive Anderson's Guessing Game was written by Michael Beck, James Felton, John McGlade and Will Cooper. It was produced by Margaret Hand Doherty.